Tasks often need done repetitively on a schedule. In ClickUp, we do this with the recurring task function. So if I go into any due date here or start date as well, I can go down to the bottom left and click set recurring. Here I can choose some options. And once I hit save, this will now be a recurring task. And you can see a little uh, icon here with some details about it. Now, if I close this task, task two, we'll see that it recurs. The close task two is now here and the new task two has been created with the due date as next week. So this one was the 20th of April, now it's the 27th of April. Okay, so that's the basics. And let's dive a little bit more into uh, settings. So let's go into our existing recurring task here. Uh, I might take the time off this task. Now we'll go back into our recurring settings to edit them. So first of all, we can choose how often we want it to recur. So default is weekly, but we've got daily as well. And you can see in the calendar exactly when it's gonna recur. So we've got daily, weekly, monthly, so every 21st. Uh, and you can change some settings here. So it can be the same day each month, or it could be, you know, every third Wednesday, or it could be, you know, the first day of the month, last day of the month as well, um, which will change depending on how many days of the month there are. So that's great. Yearly, uh, again, so every 21st of April in this case, um, or you can do days after. Um, so this is after you close that task, how many days after, and will it be scheduled for? So let's say every you know three days after completion, uh, it doesn't show it on the calendar here because it'll change depending on when you close that task. Uh, but if I save this now, so we see it's currently due today and we'll go complete. So we can see that instance is now in uh, the complete area and we're at a new task due on Saturday. Oops, I just deleted it. So Saturday was one, two, three days in advance. Okay, the next option is custom and this is for everything else so custom is pretty good you can choose day week month or year and you can do say multiple weeks so once every two weeks or you know once every three days or five days or whatever you need particularly with months you can do on a date or by week so it can be the first second third fourth or last and you can choose which day uh, monday through to sunday if we choose weeks here we can choose which day of the week and we can also choose several days of the week we might want this to occur every five weeks on the Monday, Thursday, and Saturday of that week. Uh, more common might be like every one week, uh, which means every week it's going to occur three times a week on those specific days. Um, that's a pattern that's kind of hard to create otherwise, um, but it can be done this way. Okay, and let's go back to weekly for simplicity. Now, our next option is when, is when should it recur? So on schedule is the most common. That means that if you don't complete the task, it'll still recur. Uh, and this is good if you're creating a new task because you'll have the old task from last week and the new task from this week. If you choose when closed or when done, um, these are both very similar. It's just um, the difference between closed statuses and done statuses. Uh, it will only recur after you mark that a task is done. So if you have a weekly task, but you kind of miss it for two weeks, it won't recur until you close it. And then it will recur for the week following that. So for now, I'm going to leave it on schedule. You can either create a new task, which is what we see happening here. Or if we turn this off, it will simply update the start and due dates on that same task. So let's try that out. So we've got task two here. I'll mark it as complete. We note that no extra task is added to this complete area because uh, no extra task has been created, but the due date jumped forward. So it's now the 1st of May. So it's more common to have uh, create a new task, but sometimes if you want to keep things simple and clean without all these extra tasks, it can be worth turning that off. Note that if you are doing it uh, on schedule uh, with just updating the due date, you can have it so it's constantly cycling, so it never actually gets overdue, which might be a bad thing. So if you are just updating the due date, uh, it may be better to have it um, only triggering on closed or done. If you are creating a new task, you can choose which options to be copied over. So for example, you might not want to have the attachments on the new task, or perhaps you don't want the subtask to be copied over. So you can change that around. A really useful one here is remap subtask dates. So you can choose if the subtask dates should be pushed along a week or however long you're recurring it as well. Often that's really good to have on so that all your subtasks move with the parent task. We can choose how long this should happen for. So by default, it'll happen forever until we stop it. Uh, but we can also choose to do it a certain number of times or end on a certain date. For now, I'll just leave it on recur forever. Okay, and if we are doing it on schedule, we can choose to have it update to a certain status. So by default, you can see that it always goes to the first status here. 
But if uh, for some reason we wanted it to actually go to um, say the second status, we could have that. So now if I complete this task, we'll see that the new task two is in the in progress status rather than the first one. It's also good to know that the start date will move along with the due date when it gets rescheduled. So let's, uh, let's refresh this one. Let's say that the, let's put the due date back as the 25th. We can make the start date the 23rd. Okay, so that's this Friday and Sunday, 23rd and 25th. Uh, when we mark this as complete, the new one is the 28th and 30th of May. So the start date has moved along with the due date, which is really helpful. Um, and as long as we have that subtask option on in here, our subtask due dates will do the same thing. It's also important to note with subtasks that you cre can create uh, recurrence on them individually, uh, but you don't need to. They will be copied along with their parent task. If you create recurrence on these subtasks, it will recur within this task, even if this task gets completed. So let's say, um, let's go to one of our completed ones here. So this task is complete. If I set up or if I'd had recurrence on this subtask, it would keep recurring within this one single parent task, um, which is often not needed. If you are keeping just one task, because you're always just updating the due date rather than creating a new task, so you have this turned off, then you may wish to uh, set up recurrence on these subtasks. But it's basically a, a totally separate system. They're not joined. Okay, when you have recurrence on, uh, there are future instances. So if we go ahead a couple months here, we can see all of our task twos. Now they're kind of faded out and they've got this dotted line around the edges. That's because they're not actually real tasks. Um, it's projecting into the future and showing us that a task will occur there, but it hasn't been created yet. So if I click on this, it's gonna take us to the current task two. And if I make any changes or add any details, these are all being added to the current task two. You can't edit future instances of tasks. Okay, and then very last, uh, if we do want to change the date it's recurring, if we just click on some different dates here, uh, we can change them, but the recurrence will stay the same. If we want to change the date it's recurring, we need to go into the recurring settings first and then change it. And now you'll see that uh, it'll follow what we change it to. Awesome. That is it for recurring tasks in ClickUp. Before you go, I've got something for you. After using ClickUp for a while, you'll find that it starts to get cluttered hard to use, and things can start falling through the cracks, even if you set it up really well. And that's nobody's fault, it just happens. Cars need checkups to get them running smoothly, and so does your ClickUp. What I have for you is the instruction manual on how. It's called the ClickUp Checkup, and it's a checklist of the things you need to do every one to three months that will prevent a whole swath of issues um, that start cropping up after you've been using ClickUp for about a year or so, sometimes sooner. So with it is a training video where I go through each of the checks myself so you can see exactly how I do it and why a PDF with the checklist and quick reference instructions, and finally a ClickUp task template. So you can instantly import all that directly into your ClickUp, have it recur each month or quarter um, with the checklist ready to go. Click the link in the description to get it now and prevent the headache of having the clarity you wanted from ClickUp turn into confusion. I'll see you on the inside.